I joined United in 1957. I was here when the crash happened. I was an apprentice, you know. And um, I signed pro when I was 18, you know. I signed pro when I was 17, sorry, in 1959. And um, I was just starting to, you know, starting to come and whatever. And then in 63, I got injured in the semi-final. We were fighting relegation as well. And we won the cup. That was the only thing I missed, you know what I mean, in 1963. My brother-in-law played in the 63 Cup Final, Johnny Giles. But, uh, as I say, uh, no, that, that, that was the one thing that eluded me, you know. After shrugging off the disappointment of missing the 63 Cup Final through injury, there was no stopping Nobby Styles, And the kid from Manchester went on to win it all. Champion of England, Europe and the world. When I filmed this interview with Nobby, I was making a documentary about Paddy Crerand. And Nobby gave me a fascinating insight into how they both fitted in playing for Manchester United. Paddy, had, he was a greatest long passer, 30, 40 yards. And we had the lawman who was always playing on the last defender. So Paddy could hit that ball over the top and whatever, and it was precision. But he, he, always, he always wanted the ball, Paddy. I always wanted the ball, and uh, as I say, he, he, his close control was brilliant because he was two-footed as well. You know what I mean? I wasn't. He was two-footed, Paddy, and um, as I say, and just a great character, absolutely great character. But it was the best signing for me, I believe, after Munich was Paddy coming in because, as I said, he could hit these balls over the top, thirty-four. You wouldn't, wouldn't know what you're going to get off him because he was so great at it. It's the best thing ever happened for us because you had, we had a great, we had Bobby Charlton who was a great striker, yeah. we had Georgie Best and we had Dennis. But you've got to be able to get somebody to su supply the ball, you know what I mean? The lawman, as they say, and Bobby and whatever, they'd be looking for passes 40 yards, 40 yards, my fast, longest pass would be 10 yards because out, out from the back and just play it into Paddy. But I started off as an, an attacking player, wing, attacking wing half. And when Paddy came, I had to change. And it was the best thing he ever did, because I finished up playing alongside Bill Foulkes at centre-back. And that was my best position. Nobby was a tiger in defence, playing 395 games for United, and even scored 19 goals. He was cherished for his heart and personality. And his versatility saw him switch to midfield when winning the World Cup with England. No one who's ever seen those Wembley celebrations in 66 will ever forget those images of Nobby dancing around the pitch without his front teeth in. He was a warrior who gave absolutely everything on a football pitch. The Partizan Belgrade semi-final European Cup was a game where you punched somebody and Paddy got sent off. Do you remember? I remember, yeah. I didn't get sent off, Paddy did. Hard luck. <laughs> no, Paddy, Paddy, as I say, just Paddy. Paddy. Was a bit of stick though, if he, if he got sent off for something that you'd done. But he, Paddy was a great lad, as I say, and if he, he, he was, you know, if I, I, I mean, I, I, I was, I, I was the one who chinned him, you know what I mean? So, but as I say, Paddy, you know, and um, so. <laughs> Nobby was very much a red devil with a sense of humour, but his final years ended in sadness largely ignored by the game. A game he conquered as a football hard man. But he was much more than that, as former teammates, including Paddy Creran, Dennis Law and Alex Stepney, have all been queuing up to underline, as tributes have reined in from all around the world. While off the pitch, Nobby had a heart of gold. He was much loved by all who knew him, including the famous Class of 92, he helped to nurture. Sadly, Nobby sold all his medals a decade ago to raise money for his family. And he spent most of the years since a forgotten man, abandoned by the game he adored. When Nobby sold his medals, he was already suffering from dementia, a condition almost certainly caused by playing football in days when heading the ball was like taking a heavy punch to the brain. How sad the game is yet to take responsibility for the heroes who've paid a heavy price for playing the game they've excelled at. The onset of cancer followed and a series of strokes all contributed to Nobby's slow 
and sad decline. Today the football world is paying its tributes to a genuine hero. If only they'd shown him more love and support when he needed it most. It's over seven years ago now when I filmed what was one of the last ever interviews with Nobby. He was already starting to struggle with dementia. But he still had that cheeky smile, a glint in his eye and an infectious character that made him both popular and a fearsome opponent in his playing days. He was only five foot six, but on the football pitch, Nobby was a giant of the game. I got sent off abroad in the early, it was the opening game, it was, uh, we were on a pre-season two, opening game of the season. Anyway, I got sent off and I, I got sent off on the halfway line. So I, had to, I was sent off on the far half line. So the, we had to walk all the way round to get to the tunnel. And the fellow, he's walking in front of me, the, the one me and him, the, the centre both of us off, he's walking in front of me. And I thought, he's about six foot three, 13 and a half stone. I thought, well, I'll, I'll take my time, I'll let him get well ahead of me. He did exactly the same. So by the time we get to the five goals, the distance hasn't changed. And I was a bit quick on my feet those days. I thought I'll do a runner. He did exactly the same. So by the time we get to this, this the, the, over, the, over on the continent, it's not like it. Over on the continent, it steps down, long dark tunnel, steps up into the dressing room. That's what I was thinking of, the dark tunnel. He's a big lad, you know. So he's working in front of me, he's getting bigger and he's getting bigger. I thought, slow right down, let him get well ahead of me. He did exactly the same. So by the time we get to the steps of the tunnel, the distance hasn't changed. And just as on the point of entering the, t t the steps of the tunnel, he turns and he gives me the biggest stare ever. I'm not kidding you, he's huge. I thought, sod it, in for a penny, in for good eye then. Took a deep breath, came down the steps, and he was legging it right down the tunnel. I shouted, come here, you yellow bastard. I tell you what, reputations don't half go a long way. Thank you. No danger. 